Hey, Tony, uh, Dennis Feidner with uh, a company called CFO on the Go. We're a Sage partner. Hey, thanks for your email yesterday. I'm going to do a short video for you here uh, just so you can see a little bit what it looks like, and I'll kind of wrestle with some of the items you had uh, questions on or concerns about. So uh, just so you know, Sage owns both Peachtree and uh, Sage 100, which was formerly known as Master Builder. Uh, Peachtree for, God, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years, maybe longer than that. And then... Um, Sage 100, they purchased from Intuit in 2006. So it's about a little over six years, six and a half now. Uh, so they were developed by di totally different people. They're totally separate products, although they're both owned and managed by, uh, by Sage, which is, I'm not sure you're familiar with this, but they have about 5 million companies that use one of their software solutions. So one of the biggest out there. And um, this is the latest version of Sage 100. Uh, a lot easier to use than it was in the past. It's a lot icon driven now. So, uh, I understand from your email that you and your partner both do project management. So your screen will look similar to this. This can be customized by you to add additional items. But, you know, if I want to set up a job, I click here. If uh, I want to print a subcontract, I go here. If I want to create a change order, etc. So everything is here that typically a project manager does on a daily or weekly basis. And I do want to look at jobs which are a lot different than they are in. Um, I'm going to pull one up here that's already filled out. Um, and so we, we have different statuses. So if they're in bid status or you didn't get the bid, so now we can do some tracking uh, of success. Uh, I can complete them when we're finished so that we can't put charges to it. I close it so they don't show up on reports once I get my final retention. But the nice part is, is that I can set up job types. Uh, again, I know you do HVAC, so you may want to see profitability by um, uh, commercial uh, versus you know multifamily versus maybe medical versus restaurant but up to you on what you set up in here so that you can get reporting based on not only um, the job but the type of work it is so you can see where your profit is actually coming from uh, another thing that's nice if I'm in a job um, if you look across the bottom here if I want to look at all my bid items they're right here if I want to look at the budget it's here all the purchase orders that are written for this job uh, and I know you said somebody else does that, but if I want to go see that purchase order, I can just double click that. And that's the purchase order of exactly what I ordered uh, and what have you. So uh, a way to drill back real easily. Same thing with change orders. There's all my change orders. I can drill back. Here's what I've invoiced. Here's what I've been paid. Um, here's my payment history. And a uh, nice little snapshot of where the job is. And so... If you can get to one tab, get to the job tab, you pretty much find out everything you need to know about that job uh, at a high level. So that's a little different, I think, than, than what you're probably used to. Uh, and again, I know you know this, but I always have to say it. You can always pause this, take a look at the screenshot a little bit more if you want to. But uh, one of the things you asked about, and I'm going to go into, uh, I don't have it on my screen here, so I'm going to go over here to uh, to a receivable client and... Um, I'm going to go pick my friend Jessica here. Whoops. I guess not. That's number one, actually. Um, go back one here. So I know Jessica is one of my big clients. Um, this is the contact information for her, some contact names and addresses. Uh, again, if you look across the bottom, I can get to every job I've ever done for Jessica by just clicking this. And your question was, can I track equipment? Absolutely. So for this client, I can track the equipment, if you give an equipment number, the manufacturer, the serial number, the location you put install that at, the date you installed it, the, when the ex warranty expires, the last time you serviced it, and when the next service is due, if you use our service module. But at least this information is, is kept by client, uh, and this can go with, it shows 20 rows, Tony, but this can be... I think it's nine thousand ninety nine nine ninety nine. It can't be ten thousand, but it can go up to four four to, uh, four integers there. So um, anyway, again, if that person has multiple locations, we can track all of their locations. Uh, if I do do service work for them, I can look at all the service orders I've ever done for them. I can look at their service contracts. Uh, if I if I have some, if I have a maintenance annual maintenance contract. So those are some of the things that we do. The last two things I want to show you. Um, I know you you're, say you're pretty comfortable with your uh, estimating system, and I have no problem with that, actually. I, I, if you're happy with it, we want you to stay on it. 
But what you can do is in our budgets, I was gonna bring one up here. Uh, I'll find one that's not quite as lengthy. Uh, they're all pretty big. By cost code, we want to enter in the hours, material budget, labor budget, equipment budget, and subcontract budget. If you can get these columns out of the system you're using right now, you can actually come in here, copy and paste them in so you don't have to, to enter them. Uh, or you can just come in here uh, and fill these out. You can save a template with the same cost goes over and over again, just put in the dollars that you need. But it's pretty simple to get the budget in there. So I want to close that out real quick. Um, but that's easy. That's how easy it is to get the budget in. And now if I go to job cost reports, actually, I'm going to show you something. Um, if I go to reports, top up here uh, menu, and I say search reports, and I know the answer here, but I'll let you guess. So I'm just going to say I want any report in the system that has anything to do with job cost. Uh, I'm just going to say search. It'll take a second or two years going out looking at about 15 or 1600 different reports to figure out which ones uh, fit. And it's 139 reports that have down here in the bottom left that have something to do with job cost. And the nice part is I can come in here and look. Most of these will have samples. Um, but I can tell you the one that you're probably going to use is. probably going to be something like this. Um, and so we do by divisions. These are not Costco, so you could do this by divisions. Again, I think I haven't found one yet, but if I say every one, you may find one that doesn't. But if I want to see how I spent the labor on job number two in general conditions, uh, then I just double click that and I can see the payroll. And if I want to click back, I can actually get back to the payroll record if I want to. Now, I'm going to bounce out of here because I do have some reports um, that I absolutely love, and I'm going to um, show you those. I'm imagining that you're pretty much hour-based, or so I'm going to show you a report, uh, this one right here. So anyway, put in your things here. This could be install duct. It could be install, you know, vents, uh, air balancing, what have you. Install uh, air conditioning units or chillers or whatever. These are the items of work that you do. These are the hours that you budget in your estimating system. These are the hours that are coming through payroll. Now it's making a math calculation here and just saying, hey, I had 45 hours budgeted. I'd use 56. I'm 123% complete. Regardless, now you can come in here and put in how complete am I really? And I'm going to make this a bad job. We're only 75% complete. Uh, I'm going to recalculate that real quick. And so that tells you that, you know, you need 18 more hours to finish it, and that's going to put you 29 hours over budget uh, for hours on this job. So, again, and then the bottom is always a summary, and it'll tell you what hours you budgeted, hours to date, hours to complete, and if you're going to be over or under based on what you have done so far. This is a great report uh, for people that look at man hours. My background is more of a unit price person. I'm not sure that's going to fit perfectly for all of your items, but I think it will fit for some of your items. So, you know, if you have uh, install duct, uh, install air conditioners, whatever it is, and you have a budgeted budget to do that, and you know how many units they are. And Tony, as long as it's measurable, if it's linear feet, if it's square feet, if it's eaches, um, don't care. As long as it can be measured, you can, measure, you can, you can report against it here. So, uh, like this item right here. We had a budget of twelve thousand, had one hundred and fifty to do. I spent nine thousand, almost ninety five hundred, and the field tells me I've finished one hundred and eight of those as of this Friday, last Friday. I budgeted eighty dollars and fifty cents to do it. It's costing me eighty seven dollars and eighty six cents to do it. I'm over by seven bucks. I got forty two left. It's going to cost me to to finish it, and I'm going to be over budget by eleven oh four. Great information, but what's even better is as you start estimating going forward, you can pull up some jobs that you completed and look at these unit costs and compare those to what you've been budgeting to see if you're in a ballpark or not. Like, I think I nailed this one pretty close. You know, 238 budget, doing it for 235. We're in good shape there. Um, but like up here, where I'm budgeting 86 and spending almost twice that, uh, we have a problem in the field or a problem in the office, but 
it's going to help you identify those really quickly by job, by cost skill. And so uh, I think that's important to you. Um, tons of other things that this will do. Uh, and we can spend more time on this as we go forward. But full change order management, purchase orders, subcontracts. Uh, we do uh, progress billings, AIA 702, 703. Certified payrolls is just a couple of mass clicks. And a full um, service, uh, I'm just going to pull this up real quick. Full service uh, dispatching system as well is one of the modules. And you can see a five-day schedule for each employee, uh, where they're going, what they're doing. If you have calls that have not been assigned, they kind of queue up over here on the left. And then you start dragging and dropping those and assigning those in the morning. And so nice part is, is we handle the major projects that you do with great cost reporting, submittals, transmittals, which I know you have to do, daily field reports, those hours to, to complete analysis. Uh, you probably guys are perfect and don't have punch lists, but if you happen to have some items, we have a punch list tracking in here as well. But anyway, uh, bonding report for your bonding company, work and process reports, all of it's just standard within within uh, Sage 100. So, hey, I know you're, you're busy, uh, but here's a YouTube video for you. Uh, you can watch it whenever you want. You can pass it on to your partner or whoever else you think should take a look at it. So anyway, let's keep on moving forward with this thing, and if you need more information, uh, that's what I do. I'm the owner here. Uh, I've got 16 consultants uh, on, that are certified on Sage 100, so uh, we have a great tool for bringing your information in from Peachtree, so most of it will not have to be keyed in. Uh, we can bring in, I won't, if I say everything that's wrong, we can bring in a lot of information for you where you can just basically uh, provide us the data collection tools on a Friday, come back on Monday, and your Sage 100 is populated uh, as of Friday afternoon and you're ready to go to work. So anyway, have a great weekend. Need something else, uh, my number is 800-659-5851, or you can just keep emailing me. That's fine as well. Thanks.